In my previous video, I built these new sections for the frame. I made some airbag brackets and I got a very rusty <laughs> back axle all cleaned up. Now it's time to start looking at the parallel four link suspension setup. Start making the parts for that and everything that goes with it. Coming up. So before I can do anything further, I need to set this axle in its correct, correct position. And there are quite a number of different dimensions I need to look at and verify and check. <laughs> uh, and the first one, the distance away from the front wheels. That will be the wheelbase. The second one, I must ensure that it sits parallel to the front axle. Um, what else? The third one, we need to make sure that it sits center in relation to the frame so that the wheels stick out the same on each side. <laughs> and then lastly, this distance between the axle and the bottom end of my frame. I need to check that out as well. So here's my plan for ensuring that my back axle is going to be parallel to the front. I've clamped this length of square tubing to the bottom of the frame. And it runs now all the way along the bottom of the frame through to the front, as you can see right there. So here up front you can see my piece of uh, square tubing coming through, the one clamped to the bottom of the frame. And I've decided to use this point on the wishbone as my reference. So I've got it square there and I've dropped it down and I've made a mark right there. And then here in the back there's my piece of square tubing coming through again. I made this mark here which is essentially now determining my wheelbase which I'm pretty keeping pretty similar to the original Isuzu wheelbase and I'm projecting up from that point with my rafter square or framing square onto the frame here and now I can make a mark there and now this is in essence now a memory stick because I can now take it off, go clamp it on the other side, repeat the process, line it up and make another mark. And then I know that my back axle is parallel to my front axle. Right, so the same thing here on this side. There's my memory stick <laughs> reference coming through. I've lined it up in the front by the wishbone. I can project it up and now I can make a mark right here like so so this line is supposed to line up with the center line of the axle but the axle diameter is exactly three inches so if I weld this put a flat bar on at an inch and a half from there 38 millimeters and I've got this reference it just means that I can now move my axle until the touch is there and I can still adjust it up and down as need be like that this piece of flat bar is now tacked onto the frame I've moved the axle against it I can still rotate it I can still move it up and down but it's now in the correct position parallel to the front axle both sides <laughs> and then I measured here from the flange projected it up to the frame checked to make sure that it was the same measurement on both sides and then just gave it a light tack there so that now my side axle can't move anymore oh and I did set this vertical light here the same on both sides by sticking in my bag mock-up together with the bracket that's gonna go in here okay like a man so now this thing is sitting where it's supposed to sit hopefully <laughs> and now I can start thinking about building the link bars link bar brackets 
and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Okie dokie, quite a bit of mocking up going on here in order for me to establish the sizes of all my brackets. <laughs> so uh, this one is obviously representing the lower link bar. There will be another one running here. Um, I need to build the bracket up there. Um, I've got the link bar spaced apart at 250 millimeters, 10 inches. I don't know why it's that dimension. <laughs> it just feels right. And then in the back here, I also need to make a bracket that will weld onto the back axle. Also with the hole spaced apart at 250 millimeters or 10 inches so that we can have a parallel hole link. So a little bit of thinking went into creating the shape and the layout of this bracket. So I'm going to run 17 inch rims. So half of 17 inches is what? Eight and a half inches, which is down there. And that of course is the scrub line. So I wanted my bracket to stop short of the scrub line. That's why it is where it is. So when once I've established that point, I then measured up from that point 10 inches to establish my top swivel point and then the bracket was developed like that. I packed all four plates together so now I can drill the hole in one go and then I will know that they are all the same. So I found these heim joints at a local bearing shop. Down here they are actually called rose joints or even rod ends. This one is 16 millimeters, 5'8". I think that'll be strong enough. So now this needs to go in there. But I have a problem here. This is too tight. It's hardly, well it can't even move. So I need to come up with some spaces so that we can get something like that. So I made these little bushes from the M16 nuts, 5 nuts that I just turned and drilled out. I don't know what the proper name for those things would be. I think there is a specific name for them. Now we can do that. Much better. Now we've got some good movement here and I've also got my brackets far enough so that I can actually weld there on the inside. This piece of pipe is the same diameter as my axle so the bracket will weld on like that and then I've made these gussets from 50 millimeter flat bar by 5 mil, 2 inches by almost a quarter inch so one will sit like that and the other one like that and I think that will make the whole thing very strong <laughs> let's just see how this is going to fit here so this will weld on somewhere there and then there my link bars can connect yes I think that's going to work very well okay like a man so I got both uh, the rear brackets assembled and welded up 
um, and might pretty. <laughs> A special thanks to uh, Mesco Engineering Supplies for the M16 high tensile bolts. Always a pleasure to visit Michael and his team. Right, so I think I need to start working on the forward bracket now. And to make a start on those, I've cut myself some lengths of uh, 50 by 6 flat bar, 2 inches by quarter inch. And I'm now going to use my homemade marking gauge to just scribe a center line. Okay, so the plan, Stan, is to put this piece in here, weld it onto the frame down there, then add this one, like that, as a brace, and then I've assembled this one, and that will weld on there, and I think I might even actually cap it here with a piece of flat bar, looking at it again. And then hopefully that will be strong enough. <laughs> so this one's going to go together exactly the same way as the back one. I've got my M16 high tensile bolts. Then I've got my spacers that I made from M16 nuts. So my arm joints will go next. Another spacer. Then this plate, and then my nuts. I've clamped this together with a piece of angle bar. Just make sure I've got it nicely lined up, and to ensure that I get a nice weld space here. So now I can tack it together. Okay. 
And the same deal for this one. Just got the piece of angle bar clamped on. It's all lined up nicely. So I can tack this one on as well. Well, that was quite a bit of work, but I got them all done. So I did make a few changes to these. I put this in here, so I capped it there. I just thought it would make it stronger. I did drill two extra holes so I could move my bottom link bar if I ever wanted to. All that stuff about instant centers, <laughs> if I want to play with that. And then I didn't like the way this stopped here. So I added this little piece, so now I've got a nice, smooth curve. And we all like curves, don't we? So with them done, now I've got to start thinking about making the link bars. I'm going to use this pipe to make my link bars. This is Schedule 40 Seamless Steam Pipe. Uh, the same stuff in the US would be called DOM. This one has got an outside diameter of 33 and a half inch, no, not inches, <laughs> 33 and a half millimeters, which is roughly inch and a quarter. Wall thickness, three and a half millimeters, which is roughly one eighth, maybe a tad more. So the heim joint I'm using has got a M16 by 1.5 thread. So this uh, M16 high tensile bolt can screw in there. It's roughly the same as a 5 8 bolt in the States. And now that bolt head just doesn't fit inside the pipe. So I'm just going to knock off these corners a little bit with the grinder and then it should be able to go in. Let's try it. Voila, it's going in. So I've got a plan now. If I drill a nut, let me take this off. So if I take an M16 nut and I drill it out 16 millimeter, like I've done here, I can slide this over. Now I can stick my bolt in if I knock the corners off that nut, it will also slide in. So I've got this plan to position this nut right there where the thread starts and then weld it on. And then once it's welded on, I can stick this in, weld it here, and then I want to drill some holes there and I can plug weld that bolt head so that we hold it on the bolt head as well and right here on the end like so so this nut is welded to the bolt this nut can unscrew so now i can stick this whole thing into the pipe that's too much <laughs> come back until about there i can weld it here I've already drilled a pilot hole there, so if I drill here, nice big holes on four sides and I plug weld there, I can hold that bolt head as well. I think this is going to work well and then when all is said and done, my arm joint can screw on there and I can lock it with that nut. To make the layout of my holes for the plug welds easier, I made this little aluminium jig that I've marked 90 degrees apart so the idea is for that to slip on here like this now and I can mark this line 
and then make marks like that. One more. There we go. Okay, like a man, I've got four link bars. My locking nut can now screw on here. And then I can follow that up with my arm joint. That will obviously go right there. I still got to do the other side though. But I can only do that when, once I've determined my final length. And to get the length of my link bars and make some final decisions, I've clamped my brackets in place. So this bar will sit there, I can now carefully measure here, so I can cut it to the right length. But I'm now actually concerned about something. Let me show you what I'm thinking about. Let's just have a look again at this link bar angle business. So it will sit about there when I'm fully slammed. Now I've clamped on this ruler here. And I'm thinking of a ride height of about 8 inches off the ground. So if this moves down to that position, which is about 8 inches, that is ride height. And I am concerned that this angle is too much. I know that an angle like that will give you some anti-squat properties. But there's also stuff like roll steer that comes with it. And all sorts of things that I own, actually know very little about. I think that this bar should sit a little bit more horizontal. Maybe around there. Somewhere at right height. So I'm currently contemplating the idea of actually dropping that front bracket down some. So that I don't end up with such a, a lot of link bar angle. Mm. I think I'm going to cut this bracket right above that speed hole there and drop the whole thing down two inches so that that point will then move down two inches. Yeah, it'll be the waste of a speed hole, <laughs> but it is what it is. I've done all this for nothing. So this measures about 60 mole. Two and a half inches more or less. So yes, if I cut that off, this is going to go down two and a half inches. I think that can work. Let's go and do it. <laughs> Damn it, so I made this whole part here for naught. It's not a nice feeling. Oh well. Let's send it back to the Chinese steel mills. Well, I can always weld it back on if I don't like what I've just done. <laughs> That's the beauty of steel. I also want this link bar bracket as far forward as I can. So yeah, I can't take it much further forward than that. It's right behind the cap. Because the further forward I have it, the longer my link bars can be. Now why would I want to have that? Let's go to the forest engineering design office. Which is where everything happens on plywood. <laughs> so here's my link bar. The distance I to I is 900 millimeters. 
just starts off 36 inches. So it moves through an arc as it goes up and down. And you can see already that the shorter the lever, the tighter that arc. So what this arc movement mean, arc movement means is that your differential or your back axle will actually move forward and aft as you go through a movement. For instance, let's assume this is right height, perfectly horizontal. I'm on that point right there. But now as I move up, that point starts to move forward. Right there, I've traveled eight inches. And look, that point is actually moved forward from this vertical line by almost an inch, 24 millimeters. If you look at the same thing on a shorter link bar, this position is at uh, the 18 inch position, which would be 300, uh, 450, no, I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, about 450 millimeters. There's the arc. I'm moving from that horizontal position to the 8 inch position and now you can see that it's moved forward much more. I measured it here, it's actually almost exactly 50 millimeters or 2 inches. So the shorter the link bar, the more movement of the differential fore and aft you'll get. So say this is the stationary position at right height and you go over some bumps and it's moving up and down. There will be this little bit of fore and, fore and aft movement of the back axle. The longer this bar, the less that movement will be. The shorter this bar, the more that fore and aft movement will be. So the way my bracket currently is that we looked at earlier, <laughs> I cut it down. I've got my link bar sitting at about 5 degrees at my design right height, at which point I will have 8 inches of ground clearance. And then if I slam the truck, it will move up to that position. There's the 8 inch change. So this is the position where it's fully slammed. Now I'm still not quite sure about this 5 degree downward angle. I know the guys talk about anti-squat properties, which also induces roll steer, and then we go down a whole <laughs> avenue of stuff I know very little about. But the one benefit I do see of this is the change in the fore and aft movement of my back axle is actually quite minimal. Maybe you can see it there, it's only, whew, I wonder if it's a quarter of an inch there and a quarter of an inch there, if that much. If I sit with a six inch ground clearance, I'm going to be sitting around there. And then with a four inch ground clearance, I will be perfectly horizontal. I now really need to make up my mind about this design right tight angle and whether I should drop that bracket more or not. So I've dropped my bracket another inch. So now when, I'm, uh, when my frame is lying on the ground, that is where my link bar will sit. I raised the truck eight inches, so I've got eight inches of ground clearance. Now my bar sits at about three degrees, tad more. If I were to have a six inch ground clearance, the link bar will sit there. It's pretty much horizontal at zero degrees. So there's a bit of variety here, depending on what my uh, ride height is. I think I'm finally going to settle for that position for my front bracket. Man oh man, sometimes I can really mess around with stuff forever. And I'm probably overthinking all of this. Question to ask. If a man all alone in a forest, bolts are falling from scratch, does any of this really matter? <laughs> and here we have it. All the parts I need for my parallel falling suspension system built out here in the forest. 
Now there is a much easier and quicker way to get all this. All you have to do is click a button on, two on a computer and some dude will deliver a kit to your door. But out here in South Africa it's not that easy, it's a little bit more challenging. The shipping costs and import duties absolutely kill us. You guys out in the US, you just don't know how lucky you have it. <laughs> so this side is not welded yet, you can still remove it. If I can get it out, <laughs> there we go. My bars are currently a little bit over long and I need to measure on the truck so I can cut them to exact length and then I can weld in these parts. Alright, that's enough messing around Duffy. Let's tack this thing on you and be done with it. And now the bracket on the back axle. After checking with my angle finder that it's parallel to the front bracket. That's quite important. And before someone shouts, what about pinion angle? These tacks are just temporary, just so I can establish my link bar links. Um, I still have to set my pinion angle. Um, so I can't do that right now. I need the, the engine and the transmission in place. So I will do that later. So I will break the tacks, set the pinion angle, and then weld it fully at a later time. Right, so with these two fellows now in their final resting place, 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 I can now measure my link bar lengths so I can go and finish them. Okay, so I've cut my bar to length. I've drilled these holes again for plug welds, like I did on the other side. So now my high tensile bolt will go in like that. Okay, here we go. Stick my bolt through here. And now I can tack it here, and then I've made up my first bar. Okay, I will weld it up fully on the bench. So now I can take it out. To ensure the correct geometry for my parallel four link suspension system, it is important that I make all four my link bars exactly the same length. And so to do that I quickly made up this jig using my first bar as the yardstick. I just, uh, I've got a M16 5 8 bolt there and I tacked on another one there. So now I can use this jig, I can slip over my next bar on this side and now I can mark here where to cut it. Now I can slide in my high tensile bolt with a nut already welded on like I've done the other ends and then fit it onto my jig. Get the other side in place. There we go, now I can Tack it on and it will be the same length. Oh dear, except I forgot to draw my holes here for the plug welds. So let me take it off again so I can quickly go and do that. Right, looking good, so now I can weld him. Okay, like a man, so these two are the same length now. I still need to weld here by the nut, but I'll do that a little bit later. So now I need to do two more in exactly the same way. And there we have it, man. 
four link bars of exactly the same length, I'm a happy chappy. My jig worked really well. I actually wanted to make these ends with bushes, but I couldn't find the right bushing material. So that's why I went for the iron joints or the rose joints as we call them. So I don't need this adjustability function for my system to work. Okay, so I've got my equal length link bars back into place again here on this side. Same deal here on the right hand side. I tuck this bracket into place as well. After checking that everything is exactly the same as on the other side there. So I ensured that this bracket is uh, parallel to the other one as well, if you know what I mean. This bracket in the back here is still loose, can move around. It's up nice and tight against the axle. But I can't weld it on yet because I still need to set my pinion angle of the differential. So I might have to rotate this some to get that right. So until that's been done, I cannot weld this one on yet. I made up these temporary supports that stacked onto the uh, frame up here. So I could take out my stands and now the diff is resting in this sort of cradle scenario being held nicely in place, but it will still allow me to rotate the diff as I need to set that pinion angle. And then once that's done, I can weld on the back brackets of my four link scenario, and then I can remove these. So before I can do anything further here, I've got to set that pinion angle. And to do that, I've got to stick the engine back into place. So I can measure what that angle needs to be. By the way, I see there's quite a bit of a debate going on uh, between motors versus engines. <laughs> Here's how I see it. A motor is an electric thing. <laughs> so an electric car has got a motor. Our cars have got engines. So I'll stick to that terminology. <laughs> So to get the engine back in, it will just be easier for me to take the cab off first. Now all of that sounds like quite a bit of work. And this OG is a little tired now. <laughs> so I'm going to take a break. We'll do that in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me out here in the shop. I enjoyed it. I'll see you Oaks in the next video. Until then, have a lucky one. <laughs>